Hello and welcome back to The Elder Scrolls 3 More Wind with me, Golden Self, looking very bright and very modern without our helmet or gloves on. But uh, let's go ahead and carry on with the disrobo and just see. No, no, not, not quite that far. I meant to just remove the. Um, let's go with the extravagant shirt, please. I meant to just remove the pauldrons. So we can see what our boyish looking girl adventurer would look like in her ordinary shoes. Do I not have any extravagant shoes with me? I guess not. That's not good. I need to get some extravagant shoes. Oh, I just saw... No, I guess not. But that's her. She's barefoot, though. This is our character. Very bright. I hope... I, this is really basically the test for me, whether... Because for me, she's, her face is blown out, but for you, it might look fine. Alright, let's go ahead and re-equip our, our stuff. Um, why did I end up with both sets? I really only want, uh, the one. No, we're not here for that kind of game. Maybe someday, it's another, another lifetime, we'll play a different kind of game, but, uh, not this one. Here we go. Looking good. Looking good. Let's see. Is there anything to see down here? Nope. Not a thing. Um, where's the exit? There. It's head up there. I failed casting Levitate. Fast. Try it again. Nope. Let's try regular Levitate. I have a little bit better chance with it. Nope. Got it. Okay. The effects volume is really low. I can, I can never hear it when I cast spells these days. I don't know. Also, yeah, let me know if the music or anything is too loud in the videos. It's very hard for me to be a judge of that. Not only because of, um... Shoot, I have to recover Magicka. And now he saw me. Darn it. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, he, oh I see, he summoned a Bonewalker. I can two can play at that game. But I don't have the magic for it, so we can't really. What I can do is take a potion. Oh, he hit me with the fire spell. He tried to anyway. I've got fiery. I got a, a fire resistance spell I can cast. It's quite strong. Um, I think I will. Oh, I, I actually can't cast it. It's too strong for me. But I can hit him with my greater bone walker. Where is he? Get down there. Fail. Cast. Failed. Don't have magical left. Really? Alright, back into the water, I guess. Did he follow me into here yet? No. Bonewalker still can't decide where to go. Oh, the Bonewalker is trying to hit me with uh, spells. Interesting. Alright, let's, uh... I guess we can just kite him out. There we go. And cast my own bone walker. It's in a kind of useless spot. Oh, he's down there. Oh, perfect. We can shoot him. Let's just shoot him out of the water. Right in his head. And he's dead, just like that. My own bone walker is not helpful. Ooh, the Zalabi slave key. Not that I need it anymore. I've already uh, opened their, go their gates. Open door. Let's see if we can do this now. Nope. Dang it. I really need to... Like, this alteration uh, skill uh, needs to get up. It just needs to keep getting higher and higher and higher all the time. Alright, we're in. We're in in three dimensions. Until we're not. Alright, check it out. Scroll of Grey Death. Drain health 10 to 30 points for 5 seconds on target. That's pretty good. 10 to 30 points. Take it. The Scroll of Hellfire. Ooh. Weakness to fire 5 to 12% for 10 seconds and 10 feet. Fire damage 10 to 100 points in 10 feet on target. Uh, fire damage 2 to 8 points. Though that's potentially a very good uh, scroll. A whole bunch of raw glass. Very valuable. This is a quite a quite a haul in here. Um, some some weak ingredients and weak armor 
and weak weaponry. 190 gold, if I'm reading that correctly. Not too shabby. Four small eggs. Um, not uh, Tavani Bug Musk is valuable. Fortified personality is not too bad either, but we can make our own. Uh, another unhinging uh, scroll. We've got six of those now. It's kind of ridiculous. Don't need it. Don't need it. Okay. And we just got this here. A bunch of ingredients. Uh, scroll of Elemental Burst Fire. Fire damage 40 to 65 points. 0 to 5. five that's not too bad. A lot of uh, destruction scrolls. Just um, not too shabby. Here's a water walking one. It's pretty valuable. Sort of. Scroll of Mage's Eye. Detect Enchantment. I think I have that spell. Scroll of Vigor. Restore Fatigue. 5 to 120 seconds. 5 points for 120 seconds. That's, pro that's probably quite good. Um, but I'm probably going to sell all of those. So I can pretty much do them all with spells. Or potions of my own. Fortify Endurance Bargain. Restore Agility Cheap. And a book. Nagasta Kavata. Navat Nagasta Kavata Kavakis. That sounds interesting. Let's see what that's about. We haven't read a book in quite some time. Maybe it's time we did. How long is it? Oh, it's nothing. An obscure text in the language of the slowed. Oh, wow. That is some obscure uh, lore reference there. Supposedly written by the second era Western necromancer Nagasta. Nagasta Kavata Kavakis. Nagasta Kavata Kavakis. Axtas no Jovax Slertero Oix Gemile So Ranetau Rixsevis Gixin Paginetaj Membrau Gajaliaj In Duve Duaju Kyujin Yamianire Utuzxas O Raneta Tivado And Xia Peras Info Anyway, we're not going to read the whole thing. It sounds sort of um, somewhere central, something combining kind of Central Asia with Spanish. Um, uh, we'll take everything here except for the cup. But that's interesting. The Slowed are a race of uh, amphibious... Actually, I think they're fully aquatic uh, kind of slug people who would live on one of the other continents in Tamriel, but not Akavir. I forget what it's called now. But we got to get up to there, apparently. A little hidden area, it would seem. So it's very rare to find references to the slow because so little is actually known of them. I think they may be a fact, they may be present in the Elder Scrolls Online, but I've never played it, so I can't speak to that. Man, I'm just bad at casting this spell, this fast levitate. Oh, you have zero chance. Why? Oh, because my my speed has been weakened. I think I have some restore speed potions on me. Oh, but first, let's try the spell. Oh wow, I have zero chance of casting. Is it just, oh, you know what it is? It's just because I don't have any Magicka. Probably, yeah. Nothing to do with my speed. But I would like to cast the Dispel and see what happens to my speed when I do get 25. Which could be, uh, not too long, I guess. Two, three, five. Now watch the speed stat. Mmm, nothing happened. Okay. So it's not that. I didn't mean to cast again. Uh, it's, uh. We need to just basically. Relax. Oh, yeah, it's if you secure that. I think I have a restore speed of some kind. Restore health. See how this, this sorting is coming in handy? Restore speed quality. Let's just do it. Whatever. Your speed is restored. Now, I wonder if that will affect the regeneration rate. That would be sweet. Let's see if it seems to be going faster now. Eh, maybe. I think so. Anyway, let's move on. Let's, uh, well, moving on means waiting for this. Which is obnoxious. Hey, you know what? Let's, I'll probably just cut ahead to that. But I'll, um, I'll pause right here, I think. Come back when I'm at top of that daily. We did it! We made it over the hump! This is the hump, and now we're heading over it. And we're finding a whole little secret area with another book here. The Seed. Which is a uh, subtitle seems to be Ancient Tales of the Dwemer Part 2. Well, that's very neat. Let's uh, go ahead and read this one. It was obviously placed here. It increased our axe skill, but that's uh, needless until we decide to do the Fighter's Guild quests. So let's go ahead and read this one. It's a whole thing, but we'll go ahead and do it. Because it's a whole thing. 
This one is by Marobar Sul. The hamlet village of Lorik was a quiet, peaceful Dwemer community nestled in the monochrome gray and tan dunes and boulders of the Dejasit, or the Dejasite. No vegetation of any kind grew in Lorik, though there were blackened vestiges of long dead trees scattered throughout the town. Camdita, arriving by caravan, looked at her new home with despair. She was used to the forest land of the north, where her father's family had hailed. Here, there was no shade, little water, and a great open sky. It looked like a dead land. Now you may be asking yourself, how can there be such a well-preserved Dwemer tale when even the language is not known? Well, as you can see, the, this is written by someone named Marobar Sul, which means that it may not really be an authentic Dwemer tale, but let's continue. Her mother's family took Kamdita and her younger brother Nevith in, and was very kind to the orphans, but she felt lonely in the alien village. It was not until she met an old Argonian woman who worked at the water factory that Kamdita found a friend. Her name was Sigurtha, and she said that her family had lived in Lorik centuries before the Dwemer arrived, when it was a great and beauteous forest. Uh, Argonians were there before the Dwemer, huh? Interesting. Um... There was, and you know, as you can see, she doesn't like this place because it's desolate. Um, why did the trees die? Asked Camdita. When there were Argonians only in this land, we never cut trees, for we had no need for fuel or wooden structures such as you use. When the Dwemer came, we allowed them to use the plants as they needed them, provided they never touched the hist, which are sacred to us and to the land. For many years we lived peaceably. No one wanted for anything. What happened? said Candida. Some of your scientists discovered that distilling a certain tree sap, molding it and drying it, they could create a resilient kind of armor called resin, said Sigurtha. Most of the trees that grew here had very thin ichor in their branches, but not the hist. Many of them fairly glistened with sap, which made the Dwemer merchants greedy. They hired a woodsman named Junin to start clearing the sacred arbors for profit. The old Argonian woman looked to the dusty ground and sighed. Of course, we Argonians cried out against it. It was our home, and the hist, once gone, would never return. The merchants reconsidered, but Junin took it on her, took it on his own to break our spirit. He proved one terrible bloody day that his prodigious skill with the axe could be used against people as well as trees. Any Argonian who stood in his way was hewn asunder, children as well. The Dwemer people of Lorik closed their doors and their ears to the cries of murder. Horrible, gasped Camdita. It is difficult to explain, said Sigurtha, but the deaths of our living ones was not as easy, not nearly as horrible to us as the death of our trees. You must understand it to my people. The hist are where we come from, and where we are going. To destroy our bodies is nothing. To destroy our trees is to annihilate us utterly. When Junin then turned his axe on the hist, he killed the land. The water disappeared, the animals died, and all the other life that the trees nourished crumbled and dried to dust. But you are still here, remarked Camdita. Why didn't you leave? For us, we are trapped. I am one of the last of a dying people. Few of us are strong enough to live away from our ancestral groves, and sometimes even now, there is a perfume in the air of Lorik that gives us life. It will not be long until we are all gone. Camdita felt tears welling up in her eyes. Then I will be alone in this horrible place with no trees and no friends. We Argonians have an expression, said Sigurtha, with a sad smile, taking Camdita's hand, that the best soil for a seed is found in your heart. Camdita looked into the palm of her hand and saw that Sigurtha had given her a small black pellet. It was a seed. It looks dead. It can only grow in one place in all Lorik, said the Argonian. Outside an old cottage in the hills outside town. I cannot go there, for the owner would kill me on sight, and like all my people, I am too frail to defend myself now. But you can go there and plant the seed. What will happen? asked Camdita. Will the hist return? No, but some part of their power will. That night, Camdita stole from her house and into the hills. She knew the cottage Sigurtha had spoken of. Her aunt and uncle had told her never to go there. As she approached it, the door opened, and an old but powerfully built man appeared. A mighty axe slung over his shoulder. What are you doing here, child? 
he demanded. In the dark, I almost mistook you for a lizard. Man. This being man lizard, I almost took you to be miss. I've lost my way in the dark, she said quickly. I'm trying to get back to my home in Lorik. Be on your way, then. Do you have a candle I might have? She asked piteously. I've been walking in circles, and I'm afraid I'll only return back here without a light. The old man grumbled and walked into his house. Quickly, Candida dug a hole in the dry dirt and buried the seed as deeply as she could. She returned with a lit candle. Uh, rather, he did. See to it you don't come back here, he growled, or I'll chop you in half. He returned into his house and fire. The next morning, when he awoke and opened the door, he found that his cottage was entirely sealed within an enormous tree. He picked up his axe and delivered blow after blow to the wood, but he could never break through. He tried side chops, but the wood healed itself. He tried an upper chop, followed by an under chop to form a wedge, but the wood sealed. Much time went by before someone discovered old Junine's emaciated body lying in front of his open door, still holding his blunted broken axe. It was a mystery to all what he had been chopping with it, but the legend began circulating through Lorik that hist sap was found on the blade. Shortly thereafter, small desert flowers began pushing through the dry dirt into town. Trees and plants slowly sown, newly sown, began to live tolerably well, if not luxuriantly. The hist did not return, but Camdita and the people of Lorik noticed that at a certain time around twilight, Long, wide shadows of great bygone trees would fill the streets and hills. Publishers note. The seed is one of Marobar Sol's tales, whose origins are well known. This tale originated from the Argonian slaves of southern Morrowind. Marobar Sol, quote-unquote, merely replaces the Dunmer with the Dwemer and claimed he found it in a Dwemer ruin. Furthermore, he later claimed that the Argonian version of the tale was merely retelling of his original. Lorik, while clearly not a Dwemer name, simply does not exist. Uh, and in fact, Lorik was a name commonly used incorrectly for Dunmer Nem in Gore Felim's plays. The Argonian versions of the story usually take place in Vardenfell, usually in the Telvanni city of Sadrith Mora. Of course, the so-called scholars of Temple Zero would probably claim this story has something to do with Lorcan, simply because the town starts with the letter L. Well, somebody's got opinions. Well, that was this, a little bit of a fairy tale, I guess, a folk tale of the Argonian people, adapted by a uh, Dunmer man um, named possibly Marobar Sul, um, and given a Dwemer spin for just a bit of exoticism. Lorik, of course not a Dwemer name as pointed out by the publisher, who has apparently decided to make the whole academic statement here in his publishing of a children's story. Uh, but then again, I don't know, there are academic uh, studies of folk stuff. In any case, folk literature is, I guess, the, word, the term to use. Um, uh, oral literature, I suppose. Anyway, um, Lorik, well, blah, 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 blah. so... Uh, Lorik was a name commonly used incorrectly for Dunmer and men in Gore Philim's play, so I'm not sure what exactly that say, sentence is about, but it's just a little bit of, a uh, little bit of, uh, flavor for the area to tell you, like, how everything all fits together. I like it. I look forward to the next installment. Looks like a Dwarven Battle Axe. It weighs 30. It weighs 30, and it's worth 750. Boy, this is a great little secret that we just... This is like a secret area, guys. I'm so happy... Then this crate, there's a bunch of common amulets, an extravagant belt. I don't know if we have one of those. Um, extravagant ring, pants, extravagant belt. We do have one. Um, fine. Um, what else? Commons. But another one will be good for enchanting. Let's go. Let's start with the heavy thing. Obviously, we're going to want this. It's worth 750. It looks amazing. And it's a Dwarven Battle Axe. What more do I need to say? Uh, scroll of Flame Bane. Another somewhat valuable scroll. And uh, Restore Magic is superb. Very nice. Will probably come in handy. That looks like something I should be able to pick up. Yeah, it's, it is. It's a Dwemer coin. Nice. A couple Dwemer coins are always good. Value of 50 each. They're really where you make your money in a Dwemer uh, ruin. Rising Force Bargain. Even pretty worthless. Value of 80, but useful. Grand Soul Gym take it. Probably use it. 
and then maybe sell it. Uh, got it. In fact, I should try filling that Grand Soul Gem right now. I have a few already built up now back in Balmora. So let's go ahead and take our Summon Greater Bonewalker and test this out. Cast that, and then let's cast Soul Trap. And then we have to kill him is the thing. Might not be able to, actually. Um... All right. Or maybe if we just wait for him to um, to go down, we could try to kill him. I just want to save first. There. Dagger. Dagger him. Oh, he's gonna go down. No problem. We trapped a soul. Let's see which one, which uh, soul gem did it go into. It went in there. The Greater Bone Walker, and it's worth 192 now. I believe it was worth 200 before, though. So I think it's the wrong kind of soul. If I just do this, yeah, check it out. You can recharge something. You can make an enchanted item. I could do an enchantment right now with this if I wanted. It'd be kind of a waste. But anyway, we now are over encumbered somehow. How did that happen? Our strength is sapped. Oh, he hit me with something. Uh, wow. Weakness to weapons from fatigue. Weakness to magicka. But where is the... Where is this? Why am I not seeing this? I, I don't get why these things happen sometimes. I get these, these effects happening. Alright, let's just try Dispel and see if that does anything. No, didn't fix it. It did fix my... It did get rid of my bound armor. Oh, hey, okay, so there's a way I can end levitate spells. Nice. Cool. And then fast levitate is not as important anymore. What the crap with my strength? Tell me I have a restore strength potion or something. I don't think I do. But I'll tell you what I do have. Great feather. Boom. So for 10 seconds now, I have 100 more carry weight. I'm not that much over encumbered, but this strength thing, what the crap, what the crap caused that? Very annoying. Uh, I need a restore strength spell. I think the only way to get that is from some kind of a priest. So we'll have to see about that. Oh man, how do I deal with this? Cause like, I have so, there's a bunch of loot, loot. And we're not even at our destination. We're at, we're at the sidetrack place. We're, at, we're where we got sidetracked. I'll take you. Mm, I'll just take these expensive rings for passively, possibly enchanting. I'll take one more extravagant belt. Ooh, an extravagant amulet. I don't think we even had an extravagant amulet before. I think our amulet was extravagant. Oh, it's exactly the same? Oh, uh, whatever then. Um, I, I'll take some expensive shoes, because I don't have any. Hey, yeah, that looks great. It's a really good look. No. But seriously, we have a problem here. Um, I need to drop something. In my inventory. I think I'm going to have to cut that. Oh, let's find out what's in here. Wow, we still have great feather. Ow, trap. Oh, money. I think it's uh, 79 gold. I don't know why it, when you hover over it, it doesn't say how much it actually is, whereas it does when you do here, but uh, whatever, man. Whatever. 79, there we go. Okay. Heal. Oh, good. It wasn't that strong a trap. Still got this thing going on, huh? Uh, I could always just great feather the entire way back. I probably can't, actually, just because I wouldn't have the Magicka. Let's go ahead and great feather. And levitate. Can't even do it. Can't even do it. Gotta drop stuff. Alright, I'll come right back when we are outside of this dungeon, because I think we've reached the bottom of it. And then uh, I'll talk to you then. Or rather, actually, you know what? I'm just about out of time for this episode. So, we are at a, an impasse anyway, so it's a pretty good place to uh, to do that. We've looked at everything in this little secret area, and we did a little side questy spot. A little side, just a little bit of curiosity. And you gotta have a little bit of that every now and then in your standard Elder Scrolls game. You gotta just wander into some place and see what you find. We hadn't yet done that. So now we have. 
I'm Golden Self. Thank you very much for watching. And um, if you enjoyed this video and you think I would deserve a little bit of extra search engine optimization or uh, whatever it is. Oh, maybe if I rest for a bit. Um, search and optimization or just bringing some more people to the channel. Having some until healed. Just doing that. Just uh, go ahead and give me a like, a comment, a subscription. Whatever it is. You may also want to subscribe for practical purposes and comment because you have a question or if a comment. Please do. I would like to hear it. Dang. No, it didn't fix it. Anyway, I'm Golden Self. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.